Tree climbers, uh, compared to rock climbers or aid climbers or ice climbers, mountaineers, um, tree climbers are the only ones who are climbing other living organisms. Climbing inanimate things is really great and all, but actually climbing another organism and having such a challenge of it, even an organism that's not moving, is, is quite spectacular. The first memory I have climbing a tree was when I was only three years old. I climbed all the way to the top of the tree. My mom, later on, uh, the next day, she took a chainsaw and chopped off all the branches on the first part so I couldn't climb to the top. But basically all my life I've been climbing trees. It's not a household name, that's for sure. Um, tree climbing to almost everyone is, you know, oh, you went to your backyard and you climbed a tree. That's great. <laughs> and the next step is how do you climb that tree where you can't reach the first branch? Probably one of the most challenging parts of tree climbing is getting to the branch that's always just out of reach. In order to reach that next branch, we travel to California to climb the giant sequoia. There, we plan to harvest seed cones from the canopy in order to replenish seed banks maintained by CAL FIRE and assist in research for the University of California, Berkeley. Ultimately, we hope to better understand and better protect the giant sequoia of America's Pacific West. Starting the day off on tree 236. How's it going, Rob? Pretty good. Sweet, getting the day started, yeah? Oh, yeah. It's a little bit foggy out today, but it's a little foggy. Stop us from doing some awesome climbing. Bit of a gear drop here. That's right. Let's bring these packs over. All right, we're off to our next stop. Sweet. Choosing limbs to climb on does follow um, some objective guidelines, but it's also sometimes a subjective pursuit. Um, more or less, we try to always tie on to the biggest things that are possible biggest branches possible um, and healthy. So those are the two biggest priorities. That one, that, that it's alive, and two, um, that it's substantial enough to hold someone's weight. We always go with the rule of thigh, which means if the, the limb isn't as big as your thigh, no go, it's definitely not life bearing. If it's down sloping, um, that can be not optimal. 
the rope can just slide right off the branch. In a sequoia, in its uh, young years, the top usually breaks off. And what that does is drops the height and creates a series of reiterated trunks. So the trunk usually splits toward the top. So you get these branches that are four and a half, five feet in diameter. They also come out from the side and shoot up. So you get a really nice U crotch. We usually shoot straight for that. The branch architecture when you get up to the canopy is like super three dimensional. Sometimes the branches come at you or they go away from you and they come back and then it's like they're coming back at you. So it makes for a really unique terrain to travel through. And um, it can also be a little bit scary though. There's a lot of dead wood up there and it's really fragile. So you have to be really careful not to dislodge that stuff on people below or um, even down on yourself. You can see around me, the sequoia has just been shedding branches. Some of these due to storm, some of these due to just wear and tear, some of them due to health. But look at that, you can still see blonde wood right there. This is really scary for a tree climber. These are the, uh, these are the branches we anchor to. About two weeks ago, this branch was up in the tree, and uh, if we were here, we'd probably be throwing a rope over it. So, uh, super scary. Um, there's always uncertainty in what we do, and uh, it just brings things down to reality. If you take a look around, this whole area is just littered, littered with giant branches that have fallen. Some of them, like this one here, are the size of regular trees. To start with, uh, the systems that we've developed have focused on preventing aerial rescue. So <clears throat> climbing up into the tree and rescuing somebody and lowering them to the ground can be like a lengthy um, process and can also involve a couple of switchovers that can be potentially dangerous. So most of our systems have um, rel relied on preventative medicine, we call it. Um, but basically, <clears throat> preventative measures that um, enable someone to be returned to the ground without, without a climber assisting them. Um, we call those systems releasable. For the first few years of our tree climbing, we uh, have been using a big shot, which is an eight foot tall slingshot. It hits up to about 120 feet. So the crossbow being able to hit 200, 250 feet in a tree Fire in the hole. saves us a lot of time and effort. So I think that the crossbow has been a really useful tool for us overall. It also provides us uh, a bit more entertainment maybe <laughs> than uh, some of our other tools. So it's been fun to have around. Yeah.
How's it going, Colin? All right, dude. Let's get into the top of this tree. Switch nice. Switch over the lines. Now off the full circle and on my uh, individual lanyard up here at the top of the tree. Excellent. We're going to just collect some seed cone. Nice. Nice. I just finished my climb. You can see behind me in the background, the sun has just peaked, or rather just set over the mountaintop behind me. And here is the top of our tree. The tippy tippy top is right there. You can see that our anchors are right here. About 15 feet, 10 feet from the, the topmost portion of this entire tree. view from the canopy of a sequoia. Um, well, it's definitely one of the most magnificent things I've ever seen. When you're that high in the air and you can look out across the entire canyon of everything else, and you're looking over the tops of every one of those trees, and you can see from here to near the horizon. It's one of those things that makes you feel very human. It makes, gives you like a tie to the earth, kind of, that you realize there's something that's this big and this powerful that you're sitting up on the top of. When you look out, it reminds you how strong it is and how much it's lived through. All right. We've topped out here at the top of tree 246. You can see above me, it's blue sky. So we are definitely over 200 feet tall and uh, 200 feet high right now. And uh, these seed cones right here is what we're going for. Here's an aging seed cone. You can see over here, here's a, a younger one. And the really old ones. You can see uh, over here, these are the really old seed cones that already open up their bracts. And the really, really old ones are the ones covered in these lichens. Down here is actually a seed cone, but on the top you can see it's just covered in lichens. And uh, we'll be harvesting those by the bushels. Um, the hardest part supposedly is done now that we're at the top of the tree. So lots of hard work ahead of us, but it should Some be great. The hardest work has already been taken care of. Yeah. Looking forward to doing the work itself. How's it going, Colin? All right, dude. Just out here collecting some seed cone. Top of tree 155. Nice. Going pretty well, dude. Let's check out what the weather's doing today, yeah? Take a look here. It's out in this tree. See the fog is rolling in. We got zero visibility today of the sky. Hey, Decats to Tammy, this is the summit report. Over. It's uh, slightly after 9 o'clock and the uh, fog is moving in pretty well here, but there is abundance of cone in this tree 155 and we're going to continue collecting here, over. How's it going down there, Mark? This is awesome. Yeah, what do you got? <laughs> there are a lot of uh, a lot of seed color in this tree. It's uh, not exactly a beautiful day, but it's an interesting day up here. Uh, top of the tree is in the clouds, and 
missed us blowing through. Right. Engulfed in the clouds. <laughs> Check this out. Look at this cone load. So many cones. Look at that. Pretty easy to collect them too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this one, not so good. So the seed collection project is a collaboration between these climbers here and UC Berkeley. And Berkeley has a seed bank. The seed bank stores seeds in case of catastrophic loss. Uh, sequoias, redwoods, they collect a lot of different cone types. We're out here climbing these trees, uh, not just for fun, but really to make sure that we can collect these cones from the top and provide a stable future for the species. If there was a catastrophe, like for example, if the entire Sierra burned down, um, that there would be extra seeds in the database to restart the forest. The reason we need to climb the trees as opposed to just picking them up off the ground is because the germination rate decreases exponentially as soon as they hit the ground. Um, they're also doing other research on the seeds themselves that have to do with genetic viability and, and other things. So contributing to the science, the forestry science um, of this area. So. All right, Mark, let's see it. End of the day, pour these seed cones out. It's a pretty heavy backpack. Giant sequoia seed cone. Nice. And here's uh, Tammy's taking the cone from the car to the wheelbarrow, and this thing is completely full of seed. There's sack number two. Well, it's going to be fun to pick that up. That's going to be near impossible, I gotta say. All of your cones came from three trees, so... You'll know which trees it came from, and, and if the germination is good, then you'll be set for years for this tree. You won't have to put it on your list. So if this isn't a world record, I'm not sure what is. I'll be tossing an M&M into my friend Dave's mouth down at the uh, down at the base. It will be a yellow M&M. Dave is strategically located in the ideal throwing spot, and we're choosing yellow for its visibility. So uh, we'll give Dave a holler. All right, Dave, commencing experiment over. All right, copy that. Tossing in three. Two, one. Oh! 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 <laughs>